Welcome back to this Xmonad machine. Xmonad is a window tiling manager. So this is what happens if you tile. Now, what we haven't explained until now is a Super F2. And let's put on my screen keys, otherwise you don't see anything. So Super F2 is going to launch Atom. And Atom is already tweaked and themed because of the fact that this is a programming language, Haskell, and it needs to have some coloring, some syntax coloring, and that's what we've done in previous videos. We have not taken a look at xmonad.hs yet in the videos, and um, it's let's first make an overview video. So it's all about this um, file, and it's just the file that needs to be 100% correct, otherwise you get uh, compilation errors, because this is not your standard desktop. It's not a file that you run or configs that are here. It's going to be compiled like an application and you're actually running an application, which is a desktop. Let's take a look at the big blocks. That's first. This is going to import lots of modules. So it's an, a very big and heavy uh, handbook about Xmonad and Haskell and how it works. In here, we are going to import everything from um, what's, what's available as, as modules, right? Okay, that one we've discussed and we've explained everything that's in that script, that's the auto start. So we're going to auto start elements like the polybar that we need. Next up is coloring. We want to have some coloring of the borders. Why is this blue and why is it focused blue and unfocused a little bit grayish? There's a reason for it. It's in the code. It's these two lines, normal border and focused border. And the, the other guys we don't use as of yet. Then there are new ways to define, of names to define what a super key is. So the windows key, super key is called mod4 mask and you see it here mod4 mask is my mod mask so there are some variables defined inside um, haskell and we make our own variables and most of the time we put a my in front of it my focus my follows mouse through and later on at the bottom we're gonna say that's my variable and that's the official variable that's my border width and that's the official border width and we are also going to tell uh, the workspaces. So these special kind of things are these icons up here. These icons look awesome, but you can also have my workspaces one, two, three, or Roman um, uh, numbers. So all of these things will go into detail, but just let's go over them in general way. Here are the things for, oh yeah, let's skip one. So this is about um, whether you, for instance, have GNOME there or KDE or Plasma, you can get another kind of desktop configuration in. This is the general one, the default one, but you can have also uh, other GNOME config in, for instance. How will we manipulate the windows? This is a window tiling manager, right? So how will we change them, manipulate them? Well, if it is a dialog like this one, it's a dialog file, open file, it's going to be centered. And why is it centered? Because it says do center float if there is a dialog. And if you already work with i3, that helps. If you know what xprop is, that helps. Because you can define by names, class names or titles, what to do with it. You want to center float it, you want to float it, and we can change things in here so that my C floats we want a render to float then it's floating right when I press super and then left mouse key I can move around with it so in this tutorial well I have made a tutorial already how to set up your system that you have two dual I two screens working with Xmona so this line 89 says okay if it's a render float if it's a calculator float is over logout float etc and you can keep adding stuff behind it 
And same goes for the T floats here, which is this line up here. If the title contains downloads, save as, then you float it again. You see? And the same applies for the rest of these guys. But we'll get into detail later. Just an overview right now. This was for, let me think again, for, 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 if you are going to tile and you want to have a border between, got it again. This is for, if you are going to change your, um, Default layout, which we can, Control Alt T, Super Shift Space, uh, Super Space, sorry, Super Space. We're changing our layout, and we wanted to keep our uh, space between the windows. So if you are going to change that that layout, we need this particular code to keep having these gaps in between the spaces between the windows. So that's. A way to figure out, I uh, will to tell the system, okay, whether it's this layout or that layout, just try to keep the borders, try to keep the gaps. Then there's the mouse bindings, everything about your mouse, which is right mouse click and left mouse click. And the second one, the, the, the middle one here, number two, is not used. We do not use it, it's the standard code that uh, we have. And then all the key settings. So if you are going to Super E, this is Mod Mask. That is the key E. Super E is going to launch Atom, but it is already there. So let's Super H, and then we have HTOP. Okay. So all these elements: music, Praga, Rofi Team Selector, Super R, and there you have your uh, selector and so on and so on. We can't go over all these things. A lot of keys are in here. This is an interesting thing here. 163, Super, Shift D. So we have the menu to access the D menu and to launch any application you'd like. Scrolling over the keys. Keys, keys, lots of keys, multimedia keys. So the sound go up, go down, stop the sound, brightness, play and we are using the MPC for N, uh, for usage. You can also use player control for, this is more for Spotify things and this is for NCMPCP. I will forget the name, NCMPCP, NCMPCPP. Okay, two Ps. So you can use these buttons then. And if you are on Spotify, I'll just use these guys, delete them, put lines, not delete of course, but put this little code in front of it and use this guy, this delete, and then you have your buttons that work. Um, if you have some, some keys to do the next, to go to the next um, desktop and so on, all keys, we can go into that later. But basically it's all keys. And from here, it starts to be interesting for me we are working in a, well, what Xmona thinks is a QWERTY system, right? But um, I know everything works, everything works just fine. But we, um, if I want to switch with a keyboard, super one, when I press, let's press here, super one, super one, this happens. That's for me an ampersand, right? So not the keyboard shortcuts for me don't work because we have now QWERTY users use this line. So when I want to use it as a Belgian Zerti user, then my number one is actually an ampersand and all the rest, number two, number three, etc. But I'll make a separate tutorial to switch from, sorry, QWERTY to Azerti. And here at line 333, the actual application starts. This is all in config up there, all config. And here we say, okay, start the application. We need the connection to the D-Bus. We need some logging. And then we need the EWMH, which is uh, necessary to have these icons up there. 
the QWERTY users use this line, but I need to use later on that line because I need Belgian key config bindings. And then how much gap do you want? Uh, up the upper gap is for polybar. We need some a little bit more, 35. And the, the upper, the down gap, the right gap and the left gap. So you can change these uh, elements here. And all these lines up here, mod mask equals my mod mask. We have defined up there what my mod mask is. That's our choice. And we're putting our choice in the official variable. We put our variable, our width, which is, I don't know, um, three, two, I don't know. And we're putting it in the official. And that's how everything is actually working here. The key bindings, my keys, are getting in the official variable keys. And all, all of this, this from here, from, from that part to this part, that's basically your Xmonad. And all the settings are up here. I think that gives us a good overview. And now we have to figure it out well to play around with the config. But of course, not break it. Let's include a tip that I've learned over the, the last weeks that I've uh, worked with it. This, this is all new for me as well. Uh, we have to thank Nick uh, for that, for developing this Xmonad. Let me say that as well. And um, what was I going to say? We have to, ah, a tip. The tip is never, ever use a tap. I've learned that the hard way. So what is a tap? That's this uh, jump from here to here. Never use it. Always use spaces or anything like it, but not a tap. Let it be included in the video. All right. Cheers.